how do we end a week? How do we manage to end a week? <sighs> the Avengers. Now, uh, this one I kind of told people I was going to do during the live stream. During, the, during their live stream, I'll do this one. You know, I should have thought it through a bit more. I really should have. <laughs> that sounds so far much worse than I remember being. <laughs> I remember seeing this in the cinema when it came out. It got such bad reviews that I'm a connoisseur of really bad films. Like, um, if it gets terrible reviews, I will go see it instantly. It's like, that's, that's more of an attraction for me than, you know, mediocre reviews. If it looks interesting, an interesting mess, there's lots of bad films with bad reviews, but sometimes a big, blog, big budget blockbuster with a lot of talent and it's meant to be a disaster. It's like, as soon as I hear that, I'm, I'm there. The Battlefield Earth, there. Hudson Hawk, there. Last Action Hero, there. And there's a lot of them I actually like a lot, but not Battlefield Earth. <laughs> but, so this is one of them, and I saw it, I was like, it wasn't as bad as I, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I must have been in a good mood, because I've seen it recently, I saw it like last night, and oh boy, this one's bad. This one is, I'm not sure, it, I was going to say it hasn't aged, but I don't think it was ever really any good. I was just probably saw it when I was in a good mood. And was probably very forgiving and probably very stupid at the time. Who knows? But this is bad. This is this is proper one star trash. And it's proper like, what the hell am I doing in this film? Like, um basically it's a film that was meant to be about two hours and was cut down to ninety minutes. And you can tell because there's whole chunks of it gone. But you also think, well, thank God you cut half an hour of this damn film because it would have been much more hard to set through otherwise. I mean, it's, it makes no sense, but at least it's shorter. Because <laughs> I don't think it would be good anyway because it's so miscast. It's like, we look at those three actors on the on this picture, none of them are cast properly. Like, Ray Fiennes is the one that comes off best. But he's like 10 years too young to play Steed. He looks way too young for Steed. And he doesn't have any dialogue that's really worth a damn. He's like, um, it's really bad. One of the big problems of this film, apart from the casting, is the dialogue. The dialogue's terrible. It's like someone who's trying to be witty but doesn't manage it. It's like they're trying to be underplayed but they overstate every line. And the dialogue is like, We'll, we'll, we'll be subtle not say and then we'll come out and say exactly what we meant by that it's kind of like what? I mean you were trying to be subtle then you just told me what you meant and I've already worked out what you meant and it wasn't that funny the first time and then you've actually explained it and made it even worse and then you spend another minute adding more, more puns and more innuendo none of which are funny and none of which work in the culture you're trying to suggest because this one's got innuendo after innuendo. And British culture is not innuendo laden. It's meant to be a film about British culture, like the cliche of British culture, British gentlemen, you know, fighting for British, you know, defence and things. But a one liner from a British guy is probably enough for them to move on. Instead, this goes on and on and on. And it's all this terrible stuff that's like, it feels as written by an American or rewritten by an American who doesn't understand what's going on with wit. It's like um, every it's, it's, it's like five bad lines for every one line there should be, and it's written by an American who doesn't understand the British style of talking, so it just feels like they've, they've rewritten and added more and more dialogue, and what should have been like a line or two then you go onto the scene and onto what's meant to be going on. Instead, it goes on and on and on and on. And you're like, I've lost all ability to understand where I'm meant to be going. I don't care anymore because this is terrible. Now, so Ray Fine does his best. I mean, but he is miscast. He's too young. I mean, in 10 years after this film was made, if they cast him then, he'd probably been fine. If they give him a different director, a different writer, a different plot, everything, he probably could have pulled it off if he was a bit older. Because he's like the best person in it, even though. He looks like he's wondering what the hell, man. Like what the hell's happened? Because this, this was just after the like, Slender's List and Strange Days, and not long before he would go on 
to do, I think the next film was English Patient. So this was like this disaster amidst these other big films that were a lot better respected. So, um, <laughs> you know, it was a weird one. Luckily he had English Patient coming out that actually saved his career and kept him going. Because this one was a disaster of epic proportions. So if he's the best part in it, the worst part is Uma Thurman. And I, it's just miscasting. She's just been miscast. It's like one of those things that's like, there's not much you can do after you've been miscasting something. You can do your best, but as I said, the, the, one of the problems with dialogue as it goes on, it's not very witty. It, it, it tries to have be witty, then explain something after and after and after. Kind of, I'm just telling you this story again. That's what the full film feels like. <laughs> like, it's been the same point again, again, again. But she doesn't work as Emma Peel. She doesn't have the confidence of Emma Peel. Emma Peel's meant to be confident. She does, she does not exude confidence. She seems very brittle and very scared of what she's in. She's been good in other films. I mean, with Tarantino, she's always good. She, she was with Henry and June before this, which is good. It's like, this is a big film after Batman and Robin. And these two performances kind of crippled her career for a while. And it's one of those things, it's just like, it was miscasting. It was like, uh, there's nothing you can do if you have a script with such a terrible dialogue. And there's nothing you can really do about it. So she gets lots of pretty close to wear, but... And she's with the same, she has the same accent she had for Poison Ivy, this kind of weird British accent that isn't quite British, but isn't quite American. It's somewhere weird and it doesn't quite fit anywhere. Again, with a di different director, maybe they're going to pull something out. But the script and the direction means she's just prattling on. And there's no there's no chemistry between her and Fiennes. It's just like they've been putting a scene and said, just talk to each other. Talk at each other. Like no one seems to have worked out how to make them work together. Because they're just, but they really can't because they've got a terrible script and they've been miscast. It's like, you need to be cast properly to actually get chemistry. <laughs> that's, that's a prerequisite. So, she does not work. I mean, I could keep on going on about all the stuff that doesn't work with her performance, but it's just like, it's much more about the casting process than anything else and the writing process, directing process than a proper actor. It's just like, miscast, you're miscast. That's it. But just the lack of confidence. Emma people should have confidence. She should always walk into the situation feeling confident. And you never feel that with this performance. And you never feel that with Steed either. He's got the confidence of his, what he's meant to project. He doesn't feel confident. And it's just weird. Because that's what inventors are of confidence. And you've got two actors who do not look confident. But then again, they might have realised when I died pretty quick. <laughs> who knows? It's, it's one of those that you never quite know if they knew early on that they were in something that was not going to work. Sean Connery's kind of in the middle. He's not as bad as Thurman because he's just basically Sean Connery for the second half of the movie. The first half of the movie he's meant to play a more geeky kind of character where he's terrible. He's just awful playing this sort of re meteorologist who's a bit shy. Just doesn't work. But it's one of those things where with him especially you can sense that he knows he's in a dud. He knows he's in a film that's not working. And, because there's lots of interesting imagery going on, but nothing connects to anything. I think it's a case of, they had a script and they had all this imagery and everyone thought, this could be cool. And then they started making the films like, this is not cool. <laughs> because the interesting thing is, Warner Bros. at the time who made this, were doing films that were a bit odd to try and... So they would try things. I mean, just before this came out, they made Mars Attacks, which was a film that was a bomb, but it was a really interesting bomb, and it's still well thought of now, because it was a Tim Burton film, it was really interesting, it was odd. Then the big experimental film they did after this, the big film they took a chance on after this was The Matrix. So they were putting money into films that were difficult, and sometimes they come off together, and sometimes they do not. And this is the one that did not... And it just feels like the whole film is just like fragmented. Because it doesn't have a director that works. The director of it 
don't understand British culture. Everything's overdone. Like, everything. It's like, um, there's every cliche, there's buses, there's people, there's women uh, with machine guns, there's like old women with machine guns and everything else. Everything's just overdone to a degree we think, not, he doesn't have a grasp of why this should be funny. He just thinks it's weird, but it's not, he doesn't quite get why it should be funny, or anything should be funny. He didn't know when he stopped, he didn't understand that all these double entendres are not British culture, like, at all. This is an American version of British culture. Double entendres and stuff is more American screwball comedy. British culture is much more dry, much more reserved, and there's some humour in the dialogue, and there's observation of how absurd life can be. But there's none of that in this film, it's just lots of dialogue trying to be like Oscar Wilde and the Avengers and failing. So it's a character, director doesn't understand that then there's lots of visuals, they hired lots of good people. They hired a good production designer, they hired Roger Pratt to direct, to be the DP, and it all looks great. I mean, it's, 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 it's the nicest looking disaster you'll ever see. <laughs> it looks gorgeous and it's a disaster. <laughs> And there's lots of shots of stuff that don't make any sense. Um, the underground base, there's, there's an underground base that's set in the snow, just like Batman and Robin, which Thurman was just from. And it's the same kind of plot as meandering feels Batman and Robin, where people talk way too much and they end up going to this base in the snow where they have to do all these quick costume changes. It's just astonishingly similar. <laughs> you know, and there's a <laughs> and there's a villain who's trying to control the weather. It's like, it's almost the same script. The whole film's a mess. The whole film, none of it works. Uh, it's just none of it. But, and it's like, would it have worked an hour, or like half an hour longer? No, it would not. I don't think half an hour could ever help this one. Because what's there seems to have been cut down to save the embarrassment of how bad it had gotten and how, just, just how ill-timed everything already was. It's just like there was nothing there to say it's salvage. It was just someone trying to cut it down to make it an hour and a half so that it would, they get in and out screen and try to make some money back from the mess. That's what it feels like. And it is a mess. It's a total mess. There's nothing to defend it. It's just, oh, it's woeful. It's just woeful. So this is my what the hell is this? This is, that's some Battlefield after the two ones I've been like, oh my god, what have I watched? So, I hope you enjoyed watching me squirm. Because this was painful. Right, uh, so that's me for this week. And we'll, I'll be back with individual ones over the next month or two. As we go through the Christmas and New Year period. I use this, I'm using the crowd quite late into January before I started making videos again after Christmas, so we'll see what happens. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed me squirm. Right, that's me for now. Bye.